just there James here from goodguitarist.com and today we're going to learn how to play Johnny Cash's cover of Personal Jesus and this is a really cool version of the tune because it kind of blends this minor blues thing with an 80s pop tune and it, it really works. As far as the lesson, we're going to learn how to play that riff, we're going to learn how to get through you know all the parts of the song, all the chords, all the strumming and then at the end we're going to play through a bit of the tune just so you can get used to all of it. If along the way you find you need any extra help, I have a free ebook. It's completely free for all my subscribers. It goes over all the basics of chords and strumming. And I also have another free ebook for lead. You'll get all of that. There's information on that in the corner or down below in the description. Otherwise, let's just jump right in with our riff. <laughs> This riff is based around the E minor chord, but instead of playing it like our, you know, standard E minor shape, we're gonna use one finger. We're gonna put it on the second fret of the A string and the D string. Because when we're adding that, that little bass line thing, we wanna have our middle finger free for that. And before we play any notes, I wanna anchor our picking hand. And that means we're just gonna touch the B string. That's the second thinnest string. I like to use my middle finger or my ring finger, and that's going to do two things. It's going to prevent that string from ringing out, but it's also going to give this hand an anchor point, you know, so that we don't have to watch our hand and make sure that we're picking the right strings. So it'll be a lot easier to feel where we are. So we're anchoring on the B string. We have our finger barring the second fret of the A and D string. And we're going to start out by picking the thickest string. And then we put our middle finger on the third fret of the thickest string and then we pull it off. So just try that a few times. When you're pulling off, you're kind of plucking the string with that finger. You know, I'm just plucking with my middle finger. It's like a light little pluck. And then from there, we're going to pick the A and D string. We're just going to run our pick through both of them. And while we're going to hold down both of those strings, we're really going to be aiming primarily for this string right here. So when you're plucking these two strings, you can graze this one, but you mainly want to aim for this one. And on the upstroke, you'll mostly hit this one, and you might get this one a little bit. Then we play the third fret of the thickest string again. And this time we're going to pluck the A and D string with an upstroke. So all in all, O oh, three O oh, strum three up. So just take a look at that. Try that as many times as you need to. You know, get really used to it. Just going. Just like that. Play it, count one, two, three, four to give yourself a bit of a break, and play it over and over again. And uh, before we move on, one quick thing. Anytime you play the third note, the third fret of the thickest string, you can do a little bend. You know, just grab the string and just pull it down a little bit. That's what they're doing on the recording. It sounds really cool, really bluesy. So that's the first part of the riff. Now, the second half is almost identical, except 
the first three notes. It's the same notes, but the rhythm's a little bit different. We're going to count one out loud, and then we're going to play and, two, and. Our very first note, instead of being on beat one, is on the and after one. So it goes three, four, one, and two, and. So it's identical, except that very first note is on the and of one. And I want you to try that the exact same way, going one, and two, and three, and four and one and two and three four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and and once you've practiced each half of that we can put the whole thing together and get used to cycling it you know playing it over and over again without counting one two three four between attempts so let's do that super duper slowly one and two and three and four and Now, when it comes to getting the right sound, something that you need to know is they're using a, an effect called compression on the recording. And compression basically takes all the quiet stuff and makes it louder. And then it takes all the loud stuff and makes it quieter. So if your signal is like this, you know, this is the quietest you're playing, this is the loudest you're playing, it compresses it so that everything is kind of in the same volume area. And that makes it sound really punchy. So if you're wondering, like, how come I don't sound exactly like that? It's because you gotta use some compression. You know, that's like a, it's not gonna sound like that if you're just playing acoustic guitar in your room. Anyways, moving on with the rest of the tune, the next part goes like this. We're going to start off on the AND just before one. We'll begin by taking our chord hand here and we're going to finally move it up. So now we're covering up those two strings, the D string and the G string. Also at the second fret, we play that with an upstroke and then on the A string, three, doing our little bend and our pull off and then we do those two strings again and then that was the A string open and then the third fret of the thickest string. So let's stop there and let's just get that part. Our first upstroke happens on the AND just before one. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four from here it's not too bad we just played the third fret of the thickest string we're gonna remove our index finger and now we have these two strings open we're gonna play them with an upstroke and this is where anchoring you know lightly touching the B string really comes in handy so we play that with an upstroke and then we play the thickest string again and then we play those two strings again with another upstroke and then we move our middle finger down to the second fret. Another upstroke on those two strings. First fret. And then another upstroke on those two strings. And then we're back to our main riff. So that second half. One and two and three and four and one and two. Four and one and two and three and four and one. And that sounds kind of weird out of context and super slow, but you know, bear with me here. Let's add that to the first half, to that first thing we played, and then we'll add it to our main riff, and then this will all make sense. One and two and three and four and 
one and two and three and four and one two and three and four and one two three four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one so practice it just like that and now we're going to add our main riff to it just like we do in the song and you know this is definitely the most challenging part of it. We're going to do it nice and slow. And once you have this, you have the majority of the song down. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Now that we have that down, let's move on and learn the rest of the song, which is going to be a lot simpler, just some chords and strumming. The verse starts off by playing our main riff one time, and then we play a G chord, and we go root, down, up, up, down, up, which is like the most common strumming pattern ever, but starting with a root, which is just hitting the thickest string, which we're pretty used to by now, you know, by playing that riff. So on our G chord, root, down, up, up, down, up. And then we switch to a D chord and we just played the same pattern and we don't even bother with the root, we just play a down stroke. So down, down, up, up, down, up. And then A minor, root, down, miss, up, down, up. And then we're going to play E minor slash B. And that means you play an E minor chord, but you mute the thickest string. I'm doing that with my thumb by lightly touching it and I'm going to play root down. So I'm playing the A string. That's not really the root, but it's, you know, it's our bass note. And then down. Then I switch to a C chord and I play root, which is on the A string, and then down. So root down, root down. And then we play our main riff again, and that's the verse. So let's just isolate that strumming part and then we'll add our main riff to it afterwards. One, two, three, four. Root, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, root, down, miss, up, down, up, root, down, root, down. And then adding our riff to that, we play it one time before and one time after and that's our verse. One, two, three, Four. So the chorus has some more chords and strumming. We start off on, it's kind of like an F sharp seven chord. There's a an 11 in there as well. Makes a really cool sound. And to play it, it's kind of like playing a bar chord. We put our first finger on the second fret of the thickest string, and then we put our ring finger on the fourth fret of the next string. Our pinky goes just underneath it, and that's a power chord shape, which I recommend being very familiar with, because you can play like a billion songs with just that one shape. You know, just moving it around the fretboard, super useful. Anyways, we take that shape, and then we add our middle finger to the third fret of the G string. You also find this shape in uh, Yellow by Coldplay. So if you want another song that uses it. Anyways, we have that and then the top two strings are open. So. Really cool sound. We start off with a muted stroke. So we're lowering, we're basically releasing the pressure from our fingers so that we, we get a, you know, a chuck sound. We go mute, up, down, down, up. I'll do it one more time. Three, four, mute, up, down, 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 up. And then we take this whole shape and we move it towards the nut. So we just move the shape down one fret and then we do that same pattern. Mute, up, down, 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 up. And then we play our main riff two times. So I want you to just practice mute, up, down, up, down, 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 up. 
and then just playing the thickest string, you know, just the first note of our main riff, just so you can get used to working your way into it. And then once you're good with that, we can, let's just practice it together. One, two, three, four, mute. Up, down, 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 up, mute. Up, down, 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 up. And that's like 97% of the song. There's one last thing that we do after the third verse. We'll call this the outro because it's near the end of the song where he goes um i will deliver you know i'm a forgiver we're on an a minor chord and we're gonna do the same pattern that we did on our chorus mute up down 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 up and then we do that root down root down thing that we did on e minor slash b and c and then we play our main riff once so you know we're just using components that we've already practiced let's just try it one, two, three, four, mute up, down, 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 up. And now that we've learned all the components that make up this song, let's practice putting some of this together. I want to play through the second half of the song because that's going to use everything that we learned so far. You know, and if you can do that, it's just a matter of singing different words and that's the first half of the song. So let's try that out. I'm going to play it with a metronome so we can play it at a super steady pace. We're at 86 beats per minute. One, two, a one, two, three, your own person. And that's everything that it takes to play through this tune. You know, this one's definitely a little bit trickier than what we've been doing on the channel recently. So if you're a more uh, intermediate student, this one's for you. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you need any help with any of the stuff here, I have tons of resources. There's my free ebook. I also have a course, Strumming Made Simple, which is all about building up your rhythm from scratch and then moving into more intermediate and advanced territory. Um, I have my lead ebook, which comes with my other ebook. So if you get one, you'll get the other. Um, other than that, don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a fun time practicing and I'll see you soon.